What's going on guys? Welcome back. Today we're doing services from TryHackMe. The machine is an Active Directory, Windows Active Directory machine. Um, so basically we have two tasks. As usual, we are required to retrieve the user and the root flag or the administrator flag. This machine, this, this machine involves some um, Kerberos enumeration and an easy path to privilege escalation. So let's get started. First thing I did guys, as usual, I did the nmap scan using the switch, da switch dash A and of course I used dash PN to disable ping abrobes because the machine will not work if you don't use the switch. The nmap scan will fail. So we have a couple ports, several ports actually. 53 for DNS, DNS server running on the machine and we have a web server running on port 80. And other ports indicate that this is an Active Directory or a machine that has Active Directory installed. Judging by these ports, 88 for Kerberos, and we have LDAP protocol, a port 389. And again, we have these other ports. And as you can see, with all the with the outputs, it is uh, actually indicating that this is a Windows Active Directory machine. And here you can see information about the DNS name, the DNS domain name, services.local. And this is the computer DNS name. So what we need, guys, is this. The DNS name if we want to perform um, enumeration on the Kerberos. So if you open the web page here and navigate to About Us, if you scroll down, you will see names. Of the team now that's typical of any business website to reveal the team members names but um, if you scroll again down you can see at the footer an email address now if you look closely at the format of the email address so it starts the initials as you can see the first a letter of the first name and then we have the last name if you look closely at the last names of the team members we can see that Joanne Doe uh, has do, do as her surname. So basically, we can conclude that this is the email address of, of Joanne Doe. Now, we can put the names, okay, in a list and we call it usernames. But the use of this list will be for the Kerberos enumeration or AS reprosting. So basically, we have to follow this format, okay? So as you can see, the first letter. Of the first name and then followed by point or dot and the last name at services.local so I created a username list okay let me show you the list looks like we have to open a new tab just to show you guys the list get so that's the list okay now, how, so basically, how do we know that these are the usernames? That's, we can get this by using or by performing enumeration on the Kerberos. So basically, um, here, we use the this tool, Kerberos Linux AMD64, to perform enumerations on the users. So basically, what we do here, we actually try to probe um, the response of Kerberos based on the current list we have. So if you go back to the list here, as you can see, this is the list. So it's based on what? If you go back to the team members page, as you can see, it's based on their names. So j.do, j.rock, w.masters, and j.la russo. I think I have one um, repeated duplicate uh, using, I'm gonna modify this. So nano users. So this will be, let's go back, do, so joanne.do, we can write this here actually, yeah, and that's the list of usernames, we can use the list of usernames to probe which one is a valid username on the Active Directory using Kerberos Linux AMD64, or you can use impacted tools, so there are several methods to achieve this, so we can use Kerberos, or we can use get users service principal names using impacket. We have actually 
done this in previous videos now today i'm going to show this so if we run this command we specify the domain or the dns name of the computer and the domain controller ip ip address followed by the list of the users that we have got and we can see that yeah, we have here to type user enumeration and we can see that most of the users are valid. So j.rock, masters, and this one are all valid usernames. Okay, now since we don't have passwords, um, we, have two, uh, we, have two path, we have two pathways here to take. The first one is using AS browsing and this is the optimal path for the scenario since we don't have any actual passwords. So we need to perform AS browsing to see which users um, which user among these users has the Kerberos pre-authentication attribute disabled? So if this is disabled, we can extract its hash. Now, if we have passwords, if we let's assume that we have passwords. Um, so what we can do, we can perform Kerberos thing here. We can perform something called password spray. Okay. So basically, password spray. What we do. We actually, uh, if you go back here, where is the command? Yeah, we can perform Kirbyrot Linux AMD64 to perform password spray. So we provide a, a user list, which we already have, and a password list. The password list contains the password that we suspect one of the users have. So we run password spray just to uh, find out if, the, if one of the users okay on the user list has one of the passwords in the password list but we don't since we don't have password list and we don't have any hint about any password we're going to use AS browsing to see if the Kerberos pre-authentication attribute disabled so to do that we use get np users from impact tools we provide the ip address of the machine um, the dns name and the user's file so this tool will check which one of these users have, as you can see, they don't require pre-authentication set. So WMasters and other user doesn't have the UF don't require pre-authentication set. This one has, and therefore we were able to extract the hash. Now the next step is to crack the hash. That's what we did. We stored the hash in a file called hash and we used John the Ripper to crack the hash. As you can see, we find the hash or the password of the hash service works. Okay, going back to Nmap scan, how can we use this password? So we either have to log in through SSH or through other ports. Now we have WinRM running on the machine. So we use evil WinRM, provide the IP address of the machine, the username j.rock, and the password we have just uncovered. And as you can see, we log in. Uh, uh, we have a PowerShell session. Now the next step is to perform privileged escalation. Now again guys, as you know, privileged escalation on Windows or on Linux can be performed either manually or automatically. Automatically, we use uh, scripts that's such, as, such as PowerView, PowerSploit, Windows Exploit Suggester, WinPiece, uh, LinPiece, all the tools. Uh, I have mentioned actually all the tools here in my notes file. If you are a member of the channel membership, you can find it out or you can file it in the Google Drive. Okay, let's go back here. So what we do here, let's go to the manual method. So home I dash slash all to check all the privileges the current user has. <coughs> we can see <coughs> the privileges, the groups that's part of, and we highlight this one, server operators. So this means that the current user has the ability to start and stop any service on the, on, on the, on, on the machine. In addition, they are part of remote management users. It means they can log in via RDP and they are part of authenticated users, but there are no other privileged groups that they are part of. And these are the privileges that they got. Okay. Now we use again the CMD to get computer info to get more information about the computer or the machine we are enumerating. As you can see, we get the build number we get that this is a 64-bit machine and the exact version addition to the product name which is windows server 2019 data center with active directory installed and as you can see the installation directory is windows and it is part of amazon all right 
So knowing that we can edit on services, we can start and stop services, we decided to enumerate the services by running the services command. We see the list of the services that we have access to. Now, the, the, you, can, you can try to manipulate any of these services. Okay. Now, how we manipulate services, we actually aim to change the binary path of the service. By changing the binary path of the service, we change how it works. Take an example, uh, this one, Active Directory Web Services. And the service name is AWS, and the privileges are true. So what we do here, we try to change the binary path of the service to change how it works. So to achieve a higher privilege on the machine, we can, the first option is to add the current user, okay, to the administrator's group. So using this tool, we can configure the binary path of the service. So using this command with the option config, and we put the service name, it's AWS, as you can see here, and we change, to change the binary path, we have to specify the variable binary path equal to, now here, you put the binary, the path to the executable that you want the service to uh, execute. So this could be an executable or it could be a command performed in the command prompt. So here we use this command, net local group administrators, j.rock to add this user to the administrators group. Once we do that, we will be able to um, have this user elevated, have the uh, privileges of the user elevated to an administrator rights. So we scroll down. What we have to do now, we have to start and stop the service. First, we stop the service using this command. Again, we use this tool. And instead of config, we use stop followed by the service name. Now we stop the service and again, we start it. So to, so now let me scroll all the way down. Once we start and stop the service again, we decided to log in with the user one more time using another session, open another session here. So again, even when RM with the username j.rock, service works. And here, as you can see, I check the privileges and the information about the user. I want to see that the user is part of the administrator group. So I scroll down, as you can see, local group memberships, it shows that I am part of administrator's group now. All right, so I elevated my privileges, mission completed. Now, you want to extract the flag um, of the, uh, what was this? The flag here, the administrator flag. So basically, uh, <coughs> it's safer to elevate the privileges by changing or by changing the administrator user. So basically here, we are part of the administrators. We can do whatever we want on the machine, but unfortunately we didn't, uh, we couldn't type or we couldn't uh, display the contents of the flag. So basically here, what I did, I changed the password of the administrator user. Right. So since I'm, I am part of the administrators group now, I can do whatever I want on the machine. I have elevated my privileges. From pen testing point of view, your mission is accomplished, but you have to extract the flag since you are doing this in the context of the challenge. So we change the administrator password, this command, and then we log in with the administrator now. And this way we are able to extract the flag. User flag and the root flag. All right, what is another method of achieving or elevating the privileges? Another method is to, instead of executing a command uh, in the binary path, let's scroll up. So here we used a command in the binary path. Instead, we can create a reverse shell. Okay, so going here, I create a reverse shell using MSF Venom. Now, this is the payload I specified, Windows X64, because the machine architecture is X64, and shell underscore underscore, uh, underscore reverse underscore DCP. This is a um, stageless shell. Correct me if I am uh, wrong. And here, the L host, the L port, and the extension will be executable. Once I generate this, what I can do here, I can upload it to the machine using the upload command in WinRM. I specified the path to the shell on my local machine and when this is uploaded now what I did here I chose another service AWS Lite Agent if you scroll up 
So here AWS Light Agent is another service. So I chose this one and I mean I changed the binary path to point to the path of the reverse shell I just uploaded. It was uploaded to C users documents. So I changed the path to point to the uh, the uploaded path, stop the service, start again, and you will receive the shell. Of course, don't forget to start the listener. Who am I? You are Net Authority System. So that was it, guys. Easy machine, easy active directory machine. I recommend you guys to uh, practice these kind of machines on TryHack Me if you want to uh, elevate your game in Windows Active Directory penetration testing. So that was it, guys. I hope you like that, and I will see you in the next video.